Hey guys, welcome to here of course, and today we're covering the Minotaur again. Now, uh, this time it's with Radar. Now, as I said before, I think Radar Minotaur is actually the better choice. <clears throat> it's so much better for yourself, you can stealth Radar. Yes, you miss out a couple more damage opportunities because you don't have that smoke, but Radar Minotaur is very good, and realistically I think it's a better option, which is kind of funny because, you know, on PC it's considered the meme. I really think Radar Minotaur is good because with a, a, rough, a rough concealment build you can get yourself to 9.9 .9, and with a in-depth concealment build, like a more in-depth, you can really, you know, look at me now using Turlet or using Jellico or using like Mikawa Swirsky, you can get it under 9.9. .9. So, uh, Radar Minotaur, use islands, be very careful what you do, and typical cruiser play. And by that I mean not relying on the overpen mechanic, you really can't afford to rely on the overpen mechanic for uh, the Minotaur, it's very likely either Citadels, Dev Strikes, or straight up misses. We're just checking our, uh, what do you call it now, it's a uh, plane detection window I believe as well, so we got to give that some respect. We are spotted by plane, he is dropping some computers our way. Minotaur AA, I actually checked this out by the way, it's actually slightly better than Booster AA, so I'm kind of happy with that. And hey, We've got a, an Alabama backing us up as well, or that Massa, either or. We're going to shred this plane pretty comfortably. <clears throat> we are spotted here, but uh, that being said, they can't actually do anything about it, so it's no problem shooting there. As I said, typical old school cruiser play. You need to remember it, you need to basically not rely on being overpinned, you need to play smart and tactical. You can shoot this gearing, nothing else on the map can actually shoot back besides the gearing, and that's 12 point something kilometers, 13 maybe, is that can't see that properly. Uh, he can't do anything about that, he's not going to hit this range, even with uh, AP, you know, he's just going to go too much. Iowa can't shoot us, so we're going to fire Iowa. Uh, even if we are spotted, it's completely fine to shoot. Uh, yeah, really full of your shells, we can't see our target, we're kind of relying on the auto aim mechanic here. Still not really much shells, unfortunately, I think he's turning in here. We've got to pay attention to the mini-map here, we've got planes coming in on our left, and I was pushing it here. Now, uh, if we look at the mini-map here, there's really not many threats on the, on the left hand, right hand side of A, so we can push this radar, uh, this gearing, and make sure he has a fun day. Basically get in close, radar him, and then rip him a new one. That is the plan of course, but uh, as I said before, you can't force a good game out of Minotaur, you just gotta let it happen. So, if the situation dictates a then and there that we can no longer do that, we have to straight up disengage and not come and follow through with the plan. You gotta give this Minotaur's fragileness plenty of respect, and we gotta give this Minotaur's respect. Gearing decides to go around the island to chase after the other DD. He did pop our radar hoping to be ahead of us, but he's not. We are raiding him for nearly 40 seconds I believe, so that's plenty of time for him to get spotted, to get shot at, RDD to fire torpedoes, gun him down and uh, shoot his guns as well. He actually fires torpedoes and dev strikes them, so hey, that's job done, radar put to good use, end of the day. Uh, Curve first is in firing range, so we got to give that some respect, which means we need to turn left into the gearing smoke screen. And that's the only way we can effectively fire without getting dead struck by curve first. <clears throat> that being said, he could not, there's a chance he could not, but again, you really don't want to rely on the overpen mechanic of this game with Minotaur, other battleship, other cruisers you can, but uh, realistically you need to play this very carefully and very safe. This being a risk here, this is the carrier, and you're not gonna get much of a chance to shoot up here. Curve first is probably not interested in us, we gotta get that respect. Very difficult on the very edge of his range. He might not have it, he might, so have to see. But these extra saddles on the carrier are pretty darn essential. And getting rid of the carrier gets rid of our perma spot and it keeps a lot of intelligence from the enemy. So yeah, we gotta just keep an eye on uh, Curve first. Realistically, good cruiser play. You wanna keep an eye on uh, every your your surroundings. Every for every salvo you fire with a very fast firing ship like this, every probably for two salvos. Um, so yeah, you really should pay attention as much as you can. And you can see, absolutely murdering that implacable. He's just not having a fun day. This is well worth uh, even dying potentially as well. Because getting rid of the carrier is very much. You got rid of the DD, and we got rid of the second carrier. Obviously, you don't want to die. But uh, a two for one trade of probably the biggest information gathering ships of this game. It's well worth it. Careful just shooting someone else is great news here. 
<clears throat> as I said, very risky play here, but I think it was worth it to get rid of uh, the two information gathering ships of the enemy team. Hopefully, hopefully Arshikaki will spot the enemy carrier and maybe kill him because he's on a silver of health and there's really not much he can do to defend himself there. We've got plenty of range on him and yeah, he's going to get that respect. Obviously he's not happy with us so he's going to send some torpedoes our way. Uh, whether we can dodge it or not we'll have to see. Obviously we're spotted and we're going to get perma spotted. We are shredding those planes like no tomorrow. But the tower does not take any prisoners, especially when you've got friendly a coverage support. I don't know what that is. It could be a battleship. I can't see them in that very well. Yeah, it's a, probably a mass or something. <coughs> Glad to find out at some point. Any Minotaurs in the air and goodbye. There's an Iowa. There we go. Iowa uh, gives us friendly support. He's really risky here. This could be very dangerous. He's aiming at us as well. We gotta give this a little bit of respect and we're just gonna hope for the best. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. The key overpenned or missed us. Best of luck was good. Ooh. Ooh. <coughs> Obviously, sometimes you get in these hairy situations, and yeah, it's pretty rough. As far as the defeat of key, I don't think they're actually going to hit anything. They're basically aimed right at the white line. You realistically, and realistically, you got to predict where people are going to go. If you're going to think they're going to sail a straight line yet, we'll for white line, but he probably should have turned in, so he probably should have sailed a little bit further. But again, very quick decision. Sometimes you don't think everything entirely through. Her first uh, is going to be a little bit broadside. We can get two or three salvos in. Hey, it's a little bit damage and it's free damage as well. Because by the time he shoots back, we'll be behind the island safely like we are just now. Key is pushing in here. We don't have to be this on one side, but we do have them on the other side. And again, single fire. We're going to learn what we did last time. And he's probably going to turn it just like he did before. So just fire a little bit, single fire. And just make sure that we cover that central approach with uh, his with our torpedoes. <clears throat> So the single fire is basically just so in case he hugs the island like the good play that he should be playing sort of thing. Yeah, he's turning, he's slowing down, which means he's probably going to get a couple of these torpedoes. There's a good chance of that. He does get a salvo off here. And the reason we're straightening up. Oh, this could have been dead. Yeah, risky as hell. But it was worth it to get our single fire torpedoes off. And that's one, that's two, that's three, and that's him out. Really risky opening up there, but the only reason we kind of straightened up is two things, not to beat yourself, even though we did do that, is also just to reduce our target profile because it's a high chance, even if he does hit us, it will be a Citadel anyway, so we'll just reduce our target profile and try and mitigate the salvo. Thankfully Minotaur's heal did save us a little bit there, and we were just a little bit lucky, which is always good sometimes to get the good death games, you just gotta have a little bit of luck. <coughs> Implacable, or Carrier, sorry to say, is down. I don't remember who killed him, I didn't see it in there, probably wasn't paying 100% attention there. 14 planes shot down though, pretty substantial, we've done a fair amount of AA damage and we've taken out both their spotting ships, so we have the spotting uh, lead here basically. Carefree is pushing in here, we're going to fire some torpedoes, fire some there and then fire some ahead of him, there's a lot of ships coming in, we're going to get them some respect. We do open up here, and I think it's pretty safe to open up here. It's a little bit risky with the Alaska shots, but I feel at the rate we're going, we can pretty much avoid the salvos. This time we're firing completely uh, in stealth here, completely safe, and we're getting some damage done. That being said, we are three caps down, and well, two caps down to technically, technically, but two caps down, and we are not on the ship side so we need to get rid of some ships. Take down the Worcester and we're really picking up trying to get some stuff from Baltimore. Baltimore's angling up, it's going to be a very tough cookie to crack. Alaska's doing the same kind of. We don't really have the best firing of those like to open up but again we are not small coming out uh, spinal. We are radar so we gotta give that uh, island cover and use it as much as we can. <clears throat> Staying behind this island is pretty good, um, we could hold a flank. If someone wants to rush us, they have to rush a lot of torpedoes and they have to rush a lot of DPN very quickly. So you basically need to make sure the next, the first salvo they fire on you kills you, otherwise it's going to be a tough decision. Minotaur, is that Minotaur? Yes, Minotaur is opening up here and we can really get a good shot again. Using his momentum we can get some shots but he can actually shoot us pretty darn good. So it's going to be pretty rough for him, he is turning up the angle. But it's not a point here, we're just going to still do what we can, get a little bit deep Every little shot helps, we're just trying our best to hold on to the slide, keep the enemy busy, 
well, our team has something to do trying to carry this, trying to get around the flank, basically. So, we're going to fire some defeaters, we're going to keep them busy as long as possible, and we're going to see what happens, really. Uh, oh, we should fire that extra door over there. Let's play with that, whatever, it's fine. Baltimore's opening up a little bit, he's getting on to, oh, well, a little bit aggressive here, so we'll try and get the can. Four pens, hey, it's always something. Not too much, because he's angled, but hey, it's always something again. We are radars, and not sonar there, because a minotaur is further than 4.9. It's definitely a radar. Uh, I wonder if sonar. Probably is, for the sake of it, but hey, we're just going to fire what we can here. And because we're single firing in kind of like a slow motion here, one after the other slowly, it means they have to stop. If they see the torpedoes, they will have to stop. And if they push in, they will eat the torpedoes whether they see them or not. So they got to take the time, they got to slow down a little bit. Which is always giving us time to do other things. Uh, fire more torpedoes, of course. Uh, another soul set there. Plus we can get some guns on them as well. Alaska looks like he wants to just creep forward, doesn't really want to go anymore. We've got a, another, another set of torpedoes here, we're just going to fire them with the care first. It's going to so we're probably just going to get them straight. <coughs> Alaska is kind of creeping out, he's kind of getting his shot. Oh, Alaska does get his shot out, and that's of course Citadel because it's Alaska. But we were quite lucky it wasn't worse. Kerr first, on the other hand, just went full Leroy here, and he's going to get a face full of torpedoes there. That's three, that's four. Oh my god, he dev strikes us, but we do some pretty meatable, sizable chunk damage to Kerr first. Is he going to eat the final torp? No, but he does get rid of us, that's unfortunate. I mean, look at the damage number actually, we've actually been filled in, 183,000, we've got a solo cap, 14 plane shot down, a bunch of shell hits, and a bunch of damage basically. <clears throat> but our team unfortunately melted, and that's pretty much all she wrote, unfortunately. Did what he could though, Kerr first did go down at the end, but oh, he didn't even he survived it because of saturation. So yeah, pretty tough game, <laughs> um, just goes to show you, Radar Minotaur can really do some cracking stuff. Really 2000 base XP on a loss with 183k and that's not even a smoke so yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, hope, this, hope you learned something, hope this helps you out. As always have a lovely day guys and I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye for now.